talking about my work. We're talking about Michael Mannion, Michael Mannion's work. Michael Mannion is a body player. He does not work on bodies. He's not a body worker. He plays bodies with his hands, and uh, he will describe this to you. Um, I, initially, to open up, I'd, I'd like to uh, ask you, Michael, where are you working? Well, what are you doing now? Okay, to, to pay my bills actually doing work, I provide care at a long-term care facility, residential facility for multiply disabled adults, children that were either damaged through birth defects or automobile accidents, and have to be given long-term care. Some of those people live most of their day inside of wheelchairs, all curled up like bacon. And uh, I've been given the opportunity to provide that care in the space, doing exercises, working on those typical gymnastics mats. And when I get the client out of the wheelchair and let him stretch out, I use this touch that I learned from an Inca Indian. Uh, I was teaching in South America. I had arrived from California with a typical California whiplash. Mm -hmm. I was introduced to this Indian um, who happened to be 63 year years old, had the most wonderful smile, even though he only had one tooth. Uh, the fire in his eyes was the most powerful and substantial, mystical thing that provided me this feeling of safe, even though I was in this, what do you say, seemingly nightmare world of Colombia, South America. But the truth was is that the media image of this country is completely off base, as is any news on, on TV. But uh, the truth was is that, that this man taught me the Inca bone setter massage technique. It's very subtle. The, the word massage doesn't do it right. Um, the vibrational touch at the skin communication level. Um, most people consider massage to be push and squeeze, overcoming friction. Dragging out a release, while the this light touch of the bone setter caresses, communicates, and facilitates the release, opens the door and lets the wind blow through. And once the wind is out, then the body just naturally readjusts. But you use the term opening the door. Uh, that term is used a lot in uh, Latin ceremony, Latin, Latin ceremonial music. Um, a lot of people uh, reach that state, that um, release state inside music, in Latin music. I, I, I see the similarity there. Um, the, I feel the similarity. Um, the way I look, the way I look at music, um, educated through high school with um, Israeli folk dancing as a one polarity and classic uh, Watts jazz clubs uh, on the other pole uh, just because I grew up in LA with its ranges of musical aspects sure the Yardbirds to see the cream live you know, all this this stuff, but at the same time you have this historical process that's so alive in California. Um, when I did arrive in, in Colombia, I could see where when Columbus began the conquest and the Mastiff dogs began the slaughter and the rumors of the slaughter were passed from tribe to tribe. The musicians fled to the secret valleys in the Andes and held the music away from the conquistadores, leaving them to their artillery of music. Uh, that seems to lack anything more, lack a spirituality, 
yet possess a materialistic drive to produce, kind of a workaholi workaholicism. And, and when you finally come in touch with these sp highly spiritual people, with their very light walk on very earthquakey ground, mountainous ground, um, surrounded by the, the musical whistles of the condor flying above you 20, 30, 40, 50 feet. Uh, you get to feel the spirit of the music, the spirit of the beat, of the rhythm, of the pulse. And there's definitely a hypnotic process, a real binding, releasing, pulling, uh, good feeling sensation that comes, like opening the dream gate, falling into the dream gate, and being able to fly, never hitting ground, never hitting bottom, but choosing consciously to go where your imagination, where your spirit feels to go. It's very free. And uh, the music and the touch, the Inca and the Latin rhythms possess this spirituality that was kept hidden by black clothing, uh, by silence from the, from the church peoples, from the, con the conquerors. And now with the sensitivity that Western culture is developing with um, what many people feel are the reincarnations of the ghost dancers and the, the bird spirits now, that we're, we're at a time when music is developing its true value of integration and healing and holy. Would, would you call your massage technique music rather than massage? Music in, there's, there's a, not just music, music has such a broad variety. The musical technique that I use in touch to create the release is the music that goes in what they call the bridge of a song. When a beat makes a subtle shift over to the chorus or back from the chorus to the next verse, there's a slight hesitation that occurs and the beat shifts. It goes up beat or it goes down beat. And in that change on the bridge, there's a place where you can fracture the rhythm just a little bit. When the rhythm is going and the rhythm is accepted, there's a mutual pulse occurring. When you take that rhythm and make just a slight jiggle in the rhythm and then move back to the rhythm again, that bridge space where the fracture occurs causes the deep person inside to wake up, realize that everything's wonderful, and they can drop back into a deep relaxation, a very deep, powerful, expansive, safe space, a, ho a, a holy place where the soul can be and the body can open up and heal itself. And when that drop occurs, when that, that doorway opens, when that fracture breaks the music, breaks the rhythm of the touch, then the person opens up bigger and becomes more sensitive to more subtle things. So, Inside your video, what do you show inside your video? Inside the video, it's, uh, if you want to say showing, I would say it's showing.